today, AMD just released one wild CPU. Even more GPUs can use AMD's awesome new tech, and the leaks have been confirmed. This is NVIDIA's first ever consumer desktop CPU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, AMD just released a wild CPU, or should I say re-released? Actually, it's a re-re-release because AMD just launched the Athlon 3000G for the third time. That's right, the CPU was originally launched all the way back in 2019 as an entry-level AMD processor, but a new variant was later launched in 2023 with a better cooler and a newer die based on the Dolly architecture. As it states, this was an offshoot of Raven Ridge, but it was still based on 14 nanometers. It was just a cheaper way to manufacture it. And this brings us to the re-release, -re because AMD has an even newer version based on a newer Dolly architecture, and it's currently on sale for around $40. Now, while that may seem like a decent price, don't forget that this was considered an entry-level product in 2019, so now it's essentially a snail. I'm talking it comes with just two unlocked Zen cores, four megabytes of L3 cache, a 35-watt TDP, and 3.5 gigahertz clock speed. Not only that, but while it is AM4 based, it won't work on the B550 or A520 chipsets, so you'll have to find something older. All in all, I'm really not sure who this is for, but let me know if you'd be interested down in the comments below. Next up, it's a celebration, because it's been 10 years of sinking ships and making waves with World of Warships. It's a legacy that millions of captains around the world helped create, and if you haven't been a part of it, now the perfect time to join. Luckily, they sponsored today's video so I can tell you all about it. World of Warships is the ultimate free-to-play adventure that puts you in command of a naval fleet, featuring some of history's most iconic war vessels. From battleships to destroyers, aircraft carriers, cruisers, and even submarines for anyone ready to fight beneath the sea. With incredible graphics across more than 40 unique maps and dynamic weather effects, stunning new water effects, your battleground has gone to a whole new level. Whether you want to play as a lone wolf or in a division with friends, World of Warships has you covered. And in honor of their 10th anniversary, from September through the end of the year, players will embark on a multi-month adventure packed with exclusive missions, rewards, and challenges. Oh, and did I mention it's on console and PC? Check that out in my link below. And next up for today, modders just found a way to get AMD's newest FSR4 working on RDNA 2 GPUs, meaning RX 6000 cards. Remember, it was just a few days ago that modders got it working on AMD's last-gen RX 7000 cards. That was all thanks to the fact that AMD accidentally leaked their own source code for FSR4, and while they took it down, they put it under an open source license, so those who downloaded it likely have the rights to use it. But I'm of course not a lawyer, so we'll wait and see what happens there. Regardless, within those files, AMD was working on enabling FSR4 to use Int8 instead of its default FP8. See, only their newest 9000 series offers hardware support for FP8, but thanks to that leak, modders were able to make FSR4 work with Int8. First, they got it to work on last-gen cards with about a 7% performance loss in Cyberpunk 2077 when compared to FSR 3.1. And that may sound bad, but it's roughly 6 to 7 FPS less. It looks much better. And of course, you're still getting a performance boost over native. So depending on the game and GPU, it could definitely be worth it. Well, they've done it again, but this time with RDNA 2. Specifically, this was tested on an RX 6800 XT. Just like before, this uses modded files to support an Int8 version of FSR4 instead of FP8. And according to this, just like before, it achieved a higher quality with FSR4 versus FSR3. But there was a performance hit again. This time with FSR3 quality mode, the game achieved over 110 FPS, but with FSR4 quality mode, it got around 100 to 107 FPS. They're claiming that 
we're looking at around a 10 to 20% drop in performance. And that's obviously much more significant, but still higher than not using upscaling at all. All in all, it'll be up to each person as to whether it's worth the performance loss for you or not. Steps to do this yourself were shared on Reddit, but as with anything like this, I suggest using caution before doing it yourself, and I take zero responsibility if anything goes wrong. And lastly for today, NVIDIA just confirmed all the leaks about their first ever consumer desktop CPU, meaning not the desktop chip that was just made for AI, but an actual product for you and me. So for those who haven't been following along, all of this started all the way back in May of last year, where rumors began spreading about NVIDIA teaming up with MediaTek to launch a chip for the AI PC market. And while it does have AI in the name, remember that AI PCs are just what Microsoft Microsoft and others are calling these new PC chips with NPUs in them, like the Snapdragon XLE processor and even AMD's newest stuff. So these are consumer chips that can do way more than just AI. It's really just a marketing category. Either way, fast forward to this year and Nvidia announced the DGX Spark system with their GB10 super chip made alongside MediaTek. And while this was fairly interesting, it certainly wasn't the consumer chip that we originally heard of. This was really just made for AI in a desktop form factor. But the leaks didn't stop about NVIDIA launching a consumer product until one day Computer Base actually leaked a name for these upcoming products in one. Specifically, there were at least two chips that fall under this family. The N1, which according to the leak, would be chips made for notebooks, and the N1X, which would specifically be made for desktop. But at the time, those leaks claimed that we would likely be looking at between 8 and 12 cores. But we later started hearing rumors about a 20 core part, which is the same number of cores in the GB10 super chip. And about a month later, someone found the first benchmark of this N1X, proving that the name is likely real as well as that it comes with 20 cores. And this brings us to today's story where Nvidia's own CEO, Jensen Wang, was answering questions about the Intel and Nvidia team up. And during that, he said, quote, we also have a new ARM product that's called N1, and that product is that processor is going to go into the DGX Spark and many other versions of products like that. Basically, this confirms that for one, the leaks about N1 processors are correct, and second, that it is based on the same chip as the DGX Spark. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't use cut down versions, but it would be made from that chip. Not only that, but given he says, quote, and many other versions of products like that, I'd argue this confirms that NVIDIA is definitely working on other products from this, and almost certainly those consumer chips because the DGX Spark is ultimately a Linux-based product, while we've already seen the N1X benchmarks in Windows. With all of that said, I'm sure some of you are thinking that it may never be released given the recent team-up between NVIDIA and Intel, but keep in mind that, for one, this statement from NVIDIA was made specifically to say that their ARM partnership is strong, though obviously companies lie, but from what I'm hearing, the products from Intel and Nvidia likely won't be released for years. So until then, I definitely see Nvidia still releasing these. But of course, time, as always, will tell.